pretzel time. Don't eat them, just bend like one. Here we go, side. Side, let me hear it. Blow it out. Bobby, you do not look like a pretzel. I feel like a pretzel. <laughs> doesn't count, doesn't count. Come on, blow it out, come on. Side, side, Amy, that's terrific, that's terrific. Beverly, you're looking a little lazy, looking a little lazy. Oh, come give on. me a break, I already lost three pounds. Congratulations. Want some more? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna do it this time. I know you are. Amy. Must be the ice <clears throat> Well, Brian, I, I have an excuse for being here to drop my wife off. What's well, yours? I noticed that you're not rushing off, that you're a girl watcher just like me. Well, and we don't let Mr. Simmons hear you say that because he's gonna boot us out again. But that's not why you're here. Hey, look, you're coming on strong for 7 a.m. I bet Claudia brought you down here and she wanted you to enroll. You're off base by a mile. And if you hadn't ran into me, you'd be out there right now. Come on, Brian. I'm gonna show you how it's done, all right? So you know what to do. Come on, Dorian. Reach higher. Reach cool. higher. Higher than, higher than this? Absolutely. Reach for the sky instead of high. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> do you think this stuff really works? Oh, it's the same as calisthenics in the army. Only difference in the army, there's no disco music and no girls in leotards. <laughs> Yo, I could see, said Drill Sergeant the Army. Guys, reach for the pie in the sky or the sky in the pie. And if you don't, I'll kick you there. <laughs> 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 All right, everyone, take a break, take a break. <laughs> what seems to be so funny? Uh, Scott, 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 Scott. Scotty? Oh, uh, 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 I, I, was, I was clowning around. I dropped my wife off. I mean, at the expense of the class you're clowning around? I'm sorry. I mean, these people really care about their health, and they, and they really care about their body. They wouldn't be here at 7 o'clock in the morning, Scotty. Okay. Is uh, my husband causing trouble, Richard? No, don't worry about it. Have a good day. Uh, Brian, I think you have seen enough. Now, you can get your sweatpants on and join in. I never <laughs> said, I never said that it was definite. But you promised me. He promised. Where are you going, pretzel? I want to say hello to Roy. You can say hello to Roy Richard, later. Come on, minutes. chatter's over. Come on, break's over. Let's break. go. Come on, these okay. thighs need it. Let's go. Blow it out. Take your hands up. Get in the mood. Come on. Stop. And then that jerk over at the morgue, he wants me to show him proper identification before he'll give me any information about when they're going to release Teddy's body. So anyway, look, I'll go to Florida as soon as the body's ready and everything's cleared up. Officially, they say my cousin committed suicide. Do you believe that? Right. So who got to him? I don't know. Somebody got in that cell with Teddy for five minutes alone. It had to be somebody who was in jail or somebody who worked there, like a cop. No, it's got to be more than one person. Believe me, I know. It's got to be more than one person. I'm going to find out who. All right, now look, Roy, we got you, you, you got to keep your head and hang loose with it. Yeah, like Teddy hung loose, huh? I'm sorry. Well, somebody's going to pay for this. You believe me, somebody's going to pay. Okay, all I ask is we get the proof before we send the bill. Well, I could use a little proof of my own for my own protection, Luke. You know, I'm the one who has to get out there at the airport down in Florida, and I have to face all these people with all these questions. I don't have any answers. Funny, you don't look tired. It's uh, past 8 o'clock. So? So, I got, I got some phone calls to make. Oh, good. I'll just go to the end of the line. Look, babe, it's not you. Mm. Okay, it's me. I'm uptight. I got a lot of things on my mind. Are you worried about something? Yeah. They might say I'm a little scared. Of what? You know, the Ted DeLuca thing, there's a whole organization behind him. And they're going to go right on as long as he's dead. And they're going to find somebody to blame for his death. Are you saying that they're going to send somebody after you? Yeah, I'm going to have to look twice before I cross the street, I'll tell you that much. Well, what are we going to do about it? 
I don't know. You just can't be with me that much, that's all. Oh, Mitch, don't be silly. I'm no. okay. No, no. If anything happened to you, I swear, I don't think I could take it. You gotta help me find some way to protect you. You gotta help me change my routine. All right. How about if we uh, stay at your place or get a new apartment? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, I'd just go alone. You wouldn't go with me. Yes, I will. No, you won't. No, you will not do that, I'll tell you. If it comes between me being alone or you getting hurt, there is no contest. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Class is over. Oh, thank you. It's over. It's all over. I missed out. Well, are you sure you don't belong back home in bed? Are you kidding? I feel great. Except for your behavior. Hmm. Well, I, I think it was a bum rap. I mean, I wasn't making fun of... I wasn't like... <laughs> I gotta get to work. Well, I gotta get back to class. Hey, you wanna leave your car parked here and slum along with me? Uh, no, thanks. You know, Bryant actually enjoys life in the slow lane. <laughs> yeah, thus by staying alive and enjoying life a little bit longer. I'll see you later. Oh, so long. Bye. Bye. So long. Bye. Hello, Howard. Hi, Howard. Hi, Bobby. See you later, Dory. Well, it took me about 20 minutes to figure out where you'd gone. I didn't know you had 20 minutes to spare. What is with you, Dory? I wake up this morning and you know, I look for you, reach out for you in bed, and you're not there. Because I was here. I don't understand what's going on. Can we have a quiet talk? How would I put to get back to work? I'll walk you to the hospital. It's not necessary. I have business there. Can we talk on the way? Later, Howard, on my break. Well, tell me, do you girls need a lift anywhere? Oh, uh, no, we're fine, aren't we? <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Hey, you're cheating. Get lost, Skinny. How can you eat a candy bar and still lose three pounds? It's called going off your diet. It's called climbing the walls because you don't have anything that tastes good. I'm sorry. It wasn't any of my business. Yeah, but it's mine. Bev, come here, let me talk to you a minute. I'm sorry, Beverly. Oh, forget it. It's like being an alcoholic, Beverly. I mean, you know, one drink leads to another drink, and, and one of these candy bars leads to another candy bar, and then you stop trying forever. But I went on a high-protein diet, and I did lose three pounds. Beverly, how many diets have you been on? Oh, all of them. And did they work? Well, obviously not. Listen to me. I have an idea. Look at me. Go back to the doctor, the one that said you could come to this class. Tell him that I think you have about 30 pounds to lose. Now, he's going to give you a good food program, and I'm going to help you do it. If he says it's okay, I'm on your side. Is that a deal? Okay, I'll try. I know you will. And I was a lot heavier, and if I can do it, you can do it. All really? right? Okay. You'll be fine. I'm working here now. Doing what? Cashier? No, waitress. I saw the notice up on the bulletin board. Luke Spencer gave me the job. He hired me right off. Neato. Yeah. You think he might need someone else? Wouldn't hurt to ask. Hey, Claudia. What? Hey, did you hear that? Luke is hiring people. I want to be one of them. But don't you think it'll interfere in your social life? Who can have a social life without money? Are you kidding? Wait a minute. I'll be right back. What can I say, man? I, it was just a rotten way for Teddy to go. I'm sorry. Yeah, we were really close. I owe Teddy a lot. Yeah? Luke, hi. It's Laura Baldwin. Come in, Laura Baldwin. Hi. Hi. Uh, you know Roy? Sure I do. Oh, oh, listen, I'm very sorry to hear about your cousin. Oh, thank you. Is the exercise class over now? Yep, just now. Well, I think I will go chase down Barbarino. <laughs> Uh, let me know before you leave town, will you? Yeah, we'll call you. 
So what can I do for you? Is it true that you're looking for help in the disco? Yeah. Then I'm applying. Look, I know I don't have very much experience at all, but I, I work very hard and I learn very quickly. Oh, hold it. You're going a little too fast. You mean Laura Weber Baldwin wants to wait tables? Anything wrong with it? No. There's a lot right with it from where I'm standing. I'm, I'm sorry, Laura. I can't do that. But why? I just... I heard outside that you hired another girl from campus. She's of age. You aren't. You can't serve alcohol. Oh. But you serve food, though. Yeah. So? So I could do that, at least until I'm 18, huh? <sighs> Why not, Luke? I don't think your folks or your husband would go for it. Well, you couldn't be more wrong, because Scotty and I had a very long talk about it. He really wants me to get a job, because, well, we could use some money right now. Well, you sound like everybody else. I think I am like everybody else. Oh, I don't think so, no. I'm just surprised, that's all. I thought a young woman of your background would let her husband or her folks take care of her. I, isn't that how it works anymore? Well, Scotty and I do want to be independent. But you see, he's just starting out. It's a little difficult right now. He doesn't make that much. And you want to help out? Mm-hmm. Well, I admire that. Scotty's a lucky guy. Well, then it's okay. Then I get the job, huh? <sighs> Can you start tonight at 8? I'll be here at 8 on the dot. Thank you, Luke. Uh, Thank you okay, so much. Okay, but uh, you, now you're sure it's okay to work nights, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, Scotty works late almost every night in his father's office, so sure, it's perfect. Boy, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Ted. I had to die that way. Yeah. Uh, do you have a minute? Just one. I have to get back to work. I might not see you for a day or two, Bob. I guess it's going to be pretty rough when you get to Florida, huh? Yeah, I think so. Careful, okay? I was beginning to wonder if you still felt that way, honey. Huh? Relator, hi. Night shift's over. All right, we'll talk, but I just don't know when since I haven't seen the schedule. All right, I'll check with you later. Uh, Howard, I just left Steve in the cafeteria. He's very anxious to see you. All right, I'll go see him right away. Thank you. Dory, I'm not Dory. leaving this hospital until I talk to you. Good morning. All right. Agreed. Can I go to work now? Of course. Now, here is a list for the student nurses. They'll be coming in twos to see the operation of the desk. I'll keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. Oh, Audrey, do you know how Monica is? Oh, she's holding her own. What are you talking about? She fell down a flight of stairs in her house. Oh, no. What about the baby? Well, she's been staining badly, but no miscarriage, not yet. Oh, that's awful. Isn't it? Well, now, look at it this way. Every hour she holds on to the baby, the more hope there is. Well, you sounded pretty grim on the telephone. The Kikorian case? Yeah, it's getting more complicated by the minute. The board and Lee are leaning toward a settlement, and we only have a few more days before the final vote. Well, is the board prepared to go with Lee's final judgment? You've got it. What about Rick? Oh, he's holding out for a trial, and that's why I wanted to see you. If Rick and the board are on a collision course, that means Lee is going to face a, a conflict of interest. Yeah, he certainly will. I mean, how can he fight for Rick if he's supposed to be arranging a settlement for the hospital at the same time? Hmm. I hope we can face it in unison, but if we can't, if Rick decides to go to trial, he's going to need your help. Now, Lee has already suggested that you come into the case right away. That's not a bad idea. If it turns out that Rick wants me to represent him, I'd already be conversing with the facts. Exactly my thoughts. Are you interested? Definitely, yeah. I'll talk to Rick right away. Yeah, thank you for the vote of confidence. Hey, you've been on our side from the very beginning. Well, I, I just want to see justice done here. This is just a money grab. Uh, has Zelda said anything about a final settlement? Uh, she's still after the ten million bucks, and she didn't give an inch when Lee talked to her. Steve, what about Monica? How does she feel about this? Does she want to fight it? Right now, I don't think she cares one way or the other. Why do you say that? Apparently, you hadn't heard. Monica had a bad fall, and she could lose her baby any minute. Good Lord. Boy, the Quartermains have really had a streak of bad luck, haven't they? Hello. 
You look very, very handsome. And you are blooming. <laughs> no. Nope. You are. <laughs> oh, it's great to you. They're beautiful. Miss Finley, thanks a lot. All right. Let's gossip. Say, where's Monica? Why hasn't she been to see me? She's been to see you. Well, not in the last 48 hours. Oh, really? And you must constantly be surrounded by beautiful women? Yes. Well, act your age. You're a grandfather. Uh, Speaking of that, guess who I heard from today? A letter from Ned. <laughs> you bet. And such a sweet one. <laughs> Tracy, aren't you ever going to raise that child? I have every intention, Daddy. I've heard that most of his life. You have custody. Use it. Daddy, please try to understand. You know that I love Ned very much. Well, then act like it. You know, I wouldn't say this to anyone but you. And if you tell anybody, I'll never speak to you again. Have I ever broken a confidence with you, Tracy? You're the only one who hasn't, Daddy. All right. And tell me what you're feeling. I've never been very successful with men. I've noticed it. Daddy, it's different with Mitch. And I know when we're married, I'll have a, a much better chance to really raise Ned well. Meanwhile, your son hardly knows you. Don't nag. You'll never find Monica being an absentee mother. I'm sure not. She's certainly being absent during my visiting hours. We ought to call the house and find out what's going on. This isn't like Monica or Alan. Oh, Daddy, don't bother. Maybe they just had a golden opportunity to sleep in. Was Monica feeling all right? As well as can be expected. What does that mean? She's having morning sickness or what? If she is, her husband could certainly drop by. Come on, hand me the phone. They're not home. Tracy, something's going on. Now you just keep calm. It upsets me to have things kept from me. I can see that, Daddy. Well? Tracy, I swear I'll get no, right no, up no, out no, of no, this no, 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 no. Don't, don't. Lie back and relax. I'll tell you. But it's not very good news, and nobody wanted you to know. Come on, just... come on. Out with it. <sighs> All right, Daddy. Monica has had a bad fall. She's here in the hospital, and she's doing fine. She's just fine. But there might be a little problem with the baby. Oh, my God. Oh, I feel so old. Daddy, it's just fate. Fate can take a flying leap. I want that baby. I'm sure if Monica loses this one, she'll find a way to present you with another. I may not be around. I want this baby. It's a Quartermain. Is that why you've never been particularly excited about Ned? You're the one who's never been that excited about Ned. This may be my only chance to know there's a Quartermain child to carry on the family name. Rick, why didn't you tell me about Monica? Won't be open for about five minutes, sir. Uh, or maybe never to you. Uh, is the uh, bar off limits? That's up to the bartender. Why don't we have a talk? Would you like to sit down and just talk? What for? Just a friendly talk, that's all. Whenever you and I sit down and talk, I usually end up with a few bruises. Okay, you're safe for tonight. <laughs> huh? Wrong. That's my problem. You see, I'm never interested in guys who are safe. So, of course, you're lying. And, of course, I'll sit down and talk to you. I'm thinking about us a lot. Sure you have. Sleeping in a big penthouse, catching airplanes, riding in first class. Did Tracy arrange for limousines on your last tour? Okay. 
Uh, you know, it's very possible for a guy to get lonely in a room full of 10 or 20 people. Okay, I have no excuse. I have no excuse for what I did. Except maybe I'm a coal miner's son and I did what I had to do, that's oh, all. Sure you did. Okay, I'm not proud of what I did, Well, Susan. that makes two of us. And I have feelings for you. I have deep feelings, and I am very sorry. You know, I almost wish I could believe that. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't believe it. I'd understand. I wonder if I'll ever really know when to believe you. Is this really an attack of conscience you're having, Mitch? Well, whatever it is, I'll tell you one thing, it hurts very much. So there's no future for us? There's nothing I could do to make up for anything I've done. Is that a proper remark coming from an engaged man? I'm, a mar I'm not a married man now. No, but still engaged. And I just got a glimpse from a 10 carat diamond, so I'd cool it if I were you. Hello, Tracy. Mitch has been waiting for you. Tracy? May I show you to a table? Thank you, Susan. I'll send your waiter right over. Thank you. I thought you said this morning you had to break your routine. Uh, true, I do. So why are we having lunch in this restaurant? Because it's across the street from the hospital and because I'm taking the woman I love to lunch, that's why. Well, if in fact you are sincere about breaking old habits, I strongly suggest that eating in this restaurant be one of them. You don't seem thrilled at the prospect of seeing me around more these days. Well, if you're going to be working for Lee, you'll be in and out of the hospital, but, you know, that's business. It's also my pleasure. Well, it's nothing to do with me. Dory, everything I do involves you. It's over, Howard. Excuse me. I don't want to make a scene, but you don't just drop me in one sentence and walk out. Dory, will you quit hiding and tell me what's going on? Right, you got caught up in a pattern of mine, Howard. I meet someone, I become attracted, and then I wait around waiting for them to love me. I thought we had an agreement. It's called no strings. It's a bad idea. You seem happy with me. But you weren't happy with me. Are you accusing me of moving in with you and not caring about you? You're in love with Gina Lance. Don't now. start that again. Tori, we have a good thing. And you're running it. You're in love with her, Howard, and I've done it again. I've fallen for someone who's not available. I have fallen so much in love with you. I'm sorry. She looked upset. I did. Do you see Scotty anywhere? No. Uh, hi, Mr. Lansing. Uh, hi, Laura. Uh, I think we're a little early. Why don't we just sit down? Okay. Uh, there is Scotty's sandwich. Amy. Amy, I'm so excited. I can hardly stand it. Of course you are. You're about to tell your husband some big news about your new job.